From the newsrooms of the Sydney Morning Herald and The Age, this is Please Explain. I'm Samantha Selinger Morris. It's Thursday, September 7th. What happens when a global economic power spits the dummy? It's been a pertinent question ever since China decided to pull out of a number of upcoming and crucial global meetings, and in the process, enrage many of its neighbours. It all began when China released a new map just over a week ago. Today, international and political editor Peter Harcher on what impact this new map will have on Australia and the sort of havoc that geopolitical tantrums have unleashed in the past. So, Peter, you've written about this map that I imagine many listeners wouldn't have heard of before. I know I hadn't. So what is this map and why are so many countries so angry about it? Well, the map published by China is uh, the latest version of a long series of maps published by China that stamped their territorial claim on their neighbor's territories. In short, it's traditionally been called the nine dash line, although over the years it's varied between 11 dashes and nine dashes. And the latest iteration is a 10 dash line. So let's call it the 10 dash line. And the reason it upsets everybody is that the dashes, it's like the shape of a giant tongue lolling down from China into the South China Sea and occupying, the imaginary tongue occupying more than 90% of the South China Sea, and that encompasses maritime territories, plus features, islets, rocks, whatever, owned by four countries plus Taiwan. So it's guaranteed to upset China's neighbours, plus the map also shows an intrusion into territory of India's. So it's guaranteed to upset India as well. And so how have these countries responded? Well, not happy. (laughs) China has angered its neighbours by releasing a new map showing disputed areas as Chinese territory. One of the reasons the map published now is particularly provocative is that China called it the standard map, meaning it's the finished product, it's not open to negotiation, it's the official formal position, and yet it includes the territory of so many of its neighbours. Meanwhile, Malaysia and the Philippines, they've now reacted to the map and have rubbished China's claims. China's new map... All of the countries affected have denounced it and rejected it. India has lodged a diplomatic objection with China over a new map which lays claim to Indian territory. And some countries that aren't directly affected but are very important to the regional balance of power. For example, Indonesia. The map doesn't directly overlap into Indonesian territory, but Indonesia is very sensitive to China's misbehaviour in the South China Sea because uh, China consistently sends fishing vessels and maritime administration vessels and naval vessels into Indonesian waters near the Natuna Islands and claims traditional fishing rights and Indonesia always scrambles its navy to chase them off. And the president, Joko Widodo, universally known as Jokowi, has said there is zero room for compromise, and so Indonesia has expressed its concerns about this as well. OK, and commentators have said that the release of this map now, right before a number of important summits, is particularly provocative. So why is that? Oh, well, because it's a slap in the face of all the countries that are going to be around the table. There are three summits this week two in Jakarta and one in Delhi. And around the table will be all the affected countries, India's hosting the G20 summit and the Southeast Asian countries, uh, Vietnam, Malaysia, the Philippines, they're all around the table at the ASEAN summit, the East Asia summit. So this would have brought all those countries directly face to face with Xi Jinping, the Chinese president, if he hadn't cancelled. And it was just a very undiplomatic very uh, provocative thing to do to make this unilateral, aggressive territorial claim on all your neighbours immediately before you sit down for a diplomatic summit with them. Okay, and so tell us about China's response to the anger of its neighbours. One expert you interviewed has said that China's had what amounts to a geopolitical tantrum. He even referred to the country as, quote, the man-child of Asia, unquote. So what's he talking about here? Yes, well, apparently in response to the fact that everybody suddenly cross with China, 
Xi Jinping announced that he was not going to turn up at the summits. He was going to cancel and send China's premier along instead. Now, you're right. One of the experts that I quoted, a very famous and noted Australian sinologist who's now based in New Zealand, Jeremy Barme, said, well, that's consistent with the behaviour and character of the People's Republic of China since Chinese Communist Party has been in control, in other words. And he pointed to the fact that there's a 2016 book by a Beijing-based psychologist. It was a bestseller, although it was later banned by Beijing. The book by Wu Jihong is called Giant Baby Nation. And Jeremy Barme was pointing to that and saying, well, it's notorious behaving like a spoilt baby. And he says China may talk about being the world's oldest civilization and being superior to everybody else. But on the other hand, it's a very new nation state, only 70 years old in its current form, and it behaves like an adolescent. And then he quotes the book, China is what Jeremy Barme agrees is the man child of Asia. And now, since your column appeared, there's been news of a further dummy spit on China's part. So tell us about this. Well, yes, a Chinese government agency, mysteriously and surprisingly, not the foreign ministry, but the Ministry of State Security, has said that China is further considering cancelling on yet another summit, the APEC summit, due later on. And this time saying that it's because the Americans aren't behaving up to standard. The remarkable thing about this, though, is the Ministry of State Security is is responsible for the secret police and for spying. It's not a foreign policy agency, and yet it's put out statements threatening to cancel on the APEC summit too. So, I mean, this seems to be a pretty cheeky elevation by the Ministry of State Security, a claim to have its authority over foreign policy and the president's movements. It suggests that at the very least, there's some some pretty willing competition between the different government agencies in Beijing. So it's not the smooth functioning machine that uh, Beijing would like to think it is. Right. And I'd love to get some historical context on this issue of countries behaving in a juvenile way geopolitically. I mean, China can't be reinventing the wheel here. Have there been any other major world events that were sparked by one or a series of otherwise small diplomatic snubs like we've seen with China here? One that comes to mind is a very famous, uh, very petty incident called the War of Jenkins' Ear. And the War of Jenkins' Ear was between Spain and Britain in the 1740s. And it started when a British officer recalled an incident from years earlier where he said a Spaniard had cut off his ear. Although it started with something as petty as, you know, an old grudge about a long lost severed ear, that was a war that ended up running for a decade. So, if countries want a war, they can always find a pretext. And whenever there's a, even the tiniest incident, for example, in the DMZ between North Korea and South Korea, a soldier you know, goes into the DMZ to trim a tree that's blocking the view across to the enemy line. Everybody's got their hearts in their mouths that this could end up in a, a major, major war. The least pretext will do. Further to that, the headline for your column was that China was wiping diplomacy off the map. So what happens when a country does that and decides that the concerns of the countries around them just don't matter? Yeah, it's it's kind of a very rude gesture to your neighbours, isn't it, to say, well, if you don't agree with everything I'm saying and doing, I'm just not going to bother showing up for the meeting. So Xi Jinping turned up at a BRICS summit last week in South Africa And in case you're wondering what BRICS is, the acronym was invented by a British investment banker at Goldman Sachs in 2001. He just thought it was a fun way of grouping some investment categories together. But Russia decided to turn it into an actual geopolitical thing. And it's now a group that meets every year for a summit. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. Although at this latest meeting, they admitted uh, half a dozen more members. But increasingly, China wants to use it as a platform against US power. Uh, So Xi Jinping, he traveled to Russia to visit his mate Vladimir Putin earlier in the year, but he's not going to make a much shorter trip to either the ASEAN summit, the East Asia summit, or the G20 summit. That sort of tantrum, as you said, it really slams the door on diplomacy. It means that diplomatic solutions, essentially, Xi Jinping is saying, I don't care what you think, I'm not interested in discussing the matter diplomatic solutions aren't available, just cop it. C. Raja Mohan is a a noted Indian strategic analyst, and he has said that India has had a border dispute with China dating back 70 years, 
And he said, but we always thought that we could settle this dispute diplomatically. He said, what's changed in the last couple of years, but you know, notably now this week with Xi Jinping even refusing to talk, is that we think now that political solutions are impossible, that this is going to have to be settled with force along the border. And since 2020, when the two sides clashed along their border along the Himalayan mountains, dozens of troops have died on both sides. So it's a pretty unappealing option to settle these kind of disputes by force. But C. Raja Mohan's point to me was that you don't have many options left if the other side won't talk to you. And what might all of this mean for us? Because we know Anthony Albanese was meant to have had his second meeting with Xi Jinping at the G20 summit in India, which starts on Saturday. Well, directly, I don't think the implications are are very serious or very many. It means that Anthony Albanese won't get to see Xi Jinping at the G20. Well, that's no no disaster. The prospects of a bilateral meeting between Albanese and Xi Jinping in China itself, in Beijing later in the year, are still live. The Chinese have still got the invitation on the table. Albanese has just been taking his time naming a date, committing to the, the meeting. So that's still in prospect, but the larger consequence is pretty poor, I'd suggest, Samantha, because the less diplomacy, the more confrontation in the region, the more likelihood of a clash, the likelihood of even a small incident, maybe someone cutting off someone else's ear, turning into a, a much more serious incident. The region is approaching the brink. It's not a healthy situation. And Australia shouldn't be content to sit back and just see all this happen. We, we, we need to be alert to the fact the region is moving closer to armed conflict day by day, week by week. Thank you, Peter, as always, for joining us. I wish we could end on a happier note, but uh, there we have it. Today's episode of Please Explain was produced by Tammy Mills with technical assistance by Chi Wong. Our executive producer is Ruby Schwartz. Please Explain is a production of The Age and the Sydney Morning Herald. If you enjoy the show and want more of our journalism, subscribe to our newspapers today. It's the best way to support what we do. Search The Age or smh.com.au forward slash subscribe. I'm Samantha Selinger-Morris. This is Please Explain. Thanks for listening.